Hola, hola a todos. Welcome all. Bienvenidos a un nuevo webinar de Sudamérica Coaching, una vez más con eh, traducción simultánea al eh, español. Eh, antes que arranquemos con el webinar, me gustaría invitarlos a todos a una nueva instancia de desarrollo que comienza el día martes eh, 2 de junio, en la semana que viene. Eh, esta instancia tiene que ver con el desarrollo de entornos eh, centrados en los participantes. Eh, son cinco sesiones eh, online y toda la información está en las redes sociales. Eh, una vez más, si presionan la opción de intérprete, ya están escuchando a Andrea eh, en esta opción. Welcome all to another South America Coaching Webinar. Uh, absolute pleasure to have you all here. Thanks for coping with those 30 seconds in Spanish just to welcome everybody around the world. Um, I'm going to welcome our guest today, Mr. Russell Dean Ensher from his house uh, just outside Bristol. How are you, mate? Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Hope everyone's safe and well. I can see some people from England here, which is exciting as well. Uh, we got people from all over the world, no doubt, about just under 800 sign-ups for this webinar. You've outdone Fletch already. Wow. <laughs> Mage, we jump straight into, um, if you want to start sharing your screen, that'd be brilliant. I'll give it a go, I'll give it a go. Give it a go, we're on. Does that work? Yeah, if that is working, we are on. Fantastic. Never doubt it. That's a nice photo in the middle. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, there you are. Well done. Over to you, mate. Floor is yours. Cool. Uh, hola. I think that's how you say it. Um, thanks very much for having me. Appreciate it. It's just been the busiest last 30 minutes of my life preparing this. Um, yeah, and look, um, Probably my start point for everything is really because uh, um, we're kind of a product of our experiences. I'm really lucky. I've got a wonderful wife and two kids. Um, I'm not recommending all leaders and coaches have wives and kids, but I think it's a good idea. Um, my wife looks after me. My kids keep me grounded. Um, Yeah, just some other stuff, really. I'm kind of a little bit obsessed with teams and working in teams. This is the England Pathway team. Uh, this is me with Juan when we were both a little bit uh, skinnier before lockdown. Uh, this is one of my favourite things ever. Uh, the kids in uh, the township in Kailisha. Um, it reminds you that uh, what we do, everything really, is about joy and meaning and and having fun, so whatever that means to different people. And I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with people. So as a university in the early 90s, and uh, I went back two years ago, and this lady's still the bar lady there. So that's 25 <laughs> years, 26 years on. And that I just love that kind of connection piece. So I guess one of my themes will always be that we, we operate in a people business. Um, It's a contact sport, so it's actually about interactions, leadership, um, and yeah, let's kind of explore that. This is probably where I am at the moment in time, um, in terms of some of my views, and I guess people will have different uh, views of what leadership is and what it isn't. Um, I think it's longitudinal. So I think it's what people say about you when they come to your funeral. Sorry to be so uh, morbid at the start, but um, this was a, a message I got from a student three years after I taught her. Um, I was the teacher she needed, not the teacher she wanted. So I think one of the things about all of this, again, is, is wants and needs. Um, within all of this, like observation, noticing skills is really important. and. I'm definitely trying to help the people that I work with and myself be better at that. When we're talking about developing people within our team and their leadership abilities, I think we need to understand what, what a good day for them is. How can they be Superman or Superwoman? Uh, and then probably also what makes them wobble. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, 
with all of the work kind of that ex exists for me, I kind of want people to open the door. I don't want to sneak around the back and break in. I want them to want to get better. So my biases would be that people get really excited about opportunities to, to grow and develop as leaders. Um, what else is useful? I think I think we'll talk a bit about what leadership is. I'm sure people have been watching The Last Dance um, and there's been some big debate around kind of Jordan and Rodman and Mavericks and how much pushing is too much pushing. Um, I actually think this guy's the most important guy in this situation, so Phil Jackson. I think he's a super leader. Um, he knows people individually. He gets the best out of them. He tells stories. <clears throat> and then this is a, uh, I don't know how many people know Johnny Wilkinson, but I was chatting with him once and he was saying, I'm starting to get a hang of this stuff, Rusty. I'm starting to understand it. I think I'm about 1.3% of the way there, which is rather disappointing for me because it means I'm probably about 0.8% of the way there. So um, I get pretty excited about people that want to get better. Uh, it's an infinite game. Um, so I'll just play this video. I'm sure people have seen it before. I guess my question is like, is this what leadership looks like to you? And here we go. This has become a bit of tradition. Scott Robertson, whenever he wins a final as coach, he brings out the breakdancing move. It's on again, Sean. And look at this. This is wonderful. Uh, talk, about, <laughs> talk about a bit of fresh blood. Oh, that's wonderful. Good on him. He's not finished yet either. Not bad, is he? There we go. Oh. Whoa! Finishes off with the snake. Nice finish. That's, uh, that's one when we went. No, sorry, Rusty. There's loads of coaches from other contexts as well. You you might want to tell them. Yeah, I was going to explain. That was that was Juan when we were in South Africa. <laughs> um, so now that's a guy called Scott Robertson who coaches the best club team in world rugby. They've won the Super Rugby Championship the last three years, um, and. Lots of people would, might say that that isn't leadership. Um, I think leadership is just, is, is this, is these people being engaged. It's the smiles on their faces. It's the connection between people. And, and he's just creating an environment where that exists. Um, I did a podcast with him the other day and he said, if, uh, if people aren't having fun, it's my fault, uh, which I think is a pretty cool way of thinking about it. Lots of people think professional sport should be very serious. I think they're having very, very serious fun. Um, and here we go. And just, uh, just real quickly, because this will probably bring to life some of the stuff we talk about. So um, this is my version of events. So everyone exists in different contexts. Um, I think it's about people. So this man here, Peter Walton, is developing this young man here around his leadership skills over some salt, pepper, tomato ketchup, Tabasco sauce. Um, it's really informal. However, this is the right environment to develop this young man's leadership skills. Um, second thing really is, and I think COVID's helped us. Um, it's been terrible and I hope everyone's safe, but we've had a bit of time to think. Um, and so creating opportunities for people to have time to think has been really important for me. Um, I know we're talking about developing leadership. So uh, this, young, this group of young girls, I was fortunate to spend three days in Sweden coaching them and I learned more about myself than they learned about themselves. So <clears throat> I see all of this as a two-way thing really. So they were tough, they were demanding, they didn't enjoy my sarcastic jokes. So my sarcastic joke stopped pretty quickly. Um, they made me aware of when I wasn't helping them be the best they could be. And I'll be honest with you, I've never coached a men's team that's been like that. Um, so I would recommend anyone go and coach that group of young women. They were pretty cool. And then just some stuff here that I'm, I guess will come throughout the thing is 
things like how do we give people choice? So the number one uh, behavior we can dial up <clears throat> around motivation is choice. So when we're trying to help people, how can we give them choice? <clears throat> and I'm not suggesting that, um, so my daughter, if I said to her, you, what time do you want to go to bed? She would say 3 a.m. Um, but if I gave her the choice of now or in half an hour, she'd say in half an hour. So we can also limit choice. Um, strengths, big one for me. Um, I would want to focus on people's strengths. I would want them to be themselves. I'm currently working with a business where there's a couple of women that I'm working with, women leaders who've found it really hard because they've felt like they had to behave like some of the men. Um, mm -hmm. They weren't appointed for that reason. They were appointed to be themselves. So experiences would be important. Clearly COVID has limited that. And look, we'll, we'll talk about some of this other stuff in a second. Um, <clears throat> I guess my first job in helping people uh, get better is kind of helping them understand that they might, already, they might not know what's around them or they might not be that aware of it. So I love this <clears throat> image that was shown last week by Ed Coakland of the fish don't know they're in water. I work in uh, rugby a lot and we just did a session this morning with uh, Coke from Google and I think a lot of uh, the rugby coaches didn't realise they were in water until this morning. They're constantly on the, the treadmill so the opportunity to do various things so one is to grow people's awareness so to give them some experiences and then to provide some really useful feedback that leads to a discussion so this is <clears throat> non-judgmental feedback to help someone get better so i'll just talk about a couple of them this is birmingham city football club um, and the coach get some information around which players he spoke to the most and which he spoke to the least. Now, <clears throat> you can translate that into any situation. So that might be uh, in, the, in the boardroom. So I was on a call today. <clears throat> a guy's had a real tough conversation with someone he's trying to help. And so I said, look, if you rank all your direct reports, um, and there's 10 of them, uh, where would she rank in terms of how much you know her and how much you have contact with her. Mm -hmm. And she's at the bottom. So that's a really good, <clears throat> for me, this would translate anywhere. You would have stuff that would help you grow people's leadership skills. So we're actually designing some stuff for him that'll help him be more mindful of the people less like him. Uh, this one is a heat map. So this is a hockey coach. This is where they were standing. So it gives you feedback around where you were standing and therefore what you were noticing. So it might be that you're working with a coach or a leader and you actually, now where you stand is really important. So um, if you stand at the back of the room, that will create a different feel to if you're at the front of the room. Um, if you stand at the end of the pitch, you'll see different stuff to the side of the pitch. So <clears throat> I guess what I'm trying to say is we're trying to create some meaningful feedback for people. This is, and I'm not sure if people can see it, this is, this is a coach talking about his behavior. So this is silence, positive feedback, negative feedback, instruction, hustle. But once again, it leads to a really good conversation around intention. So did you mean to speak to Russell the most? Did you mean to spend this amount of time being silent and what did you do? So for me, the first, <clears throat> Opportunity stuff with all of this is give great opportunities for people and and lenders look at feedback and I'll give you a really strong example so this guy's a guy called John Mitchell he used to coach the All Blacks he coaches England at the moment he used to be a very very scary man um, <laughs> he's really different now and the thing that changed him was he wrote 25 handwritten letters to the people he'd clashed with the most asking them how he could be a better human being. So I don't know if you can imagine how you would feel at that point in time. I would be a little bit nervous. Um, <clears throat> and 21 people responded. And so how can we give people feedback around the impact they're having would be something for me. 
I spoke a little bit there about opportunities for me. Getting out of your world as much as possible has been really impactful. This was the girls. <clears throat> I spent a period of time coaching the Israeli sevens team. Um, I don't speak their language. They would have lots of different traditions, a really different culture. Um, they thought I was a little bit weird. Um, <clears throat> maybe I am. Who knows? I just don't know. <clears throat> And so creating opportunities for people to, to get into different worlds and find something out would be something I would be doing a lot across all of our, <clears throat> across all of our members of staff, to be honest, um, and probably using them as an opportunity to stretch. So maybe another good example. So Kaz Morgan, who's now the England analyst, was, um, wasn't very good at kind of dealing with difficult conversations. So whenever there was a problem with the hotel, whenever there was a problem with, with buses, anything like that with England, then Kaz would sort it out. So we're giving him opportunities. Um, and some other <clears throat> examples here, this is a Google. Um, I also think that just that getting out of your context. So this was me delivering to, to people who just aren't like me. So once again, that was, that was really, really tough for me. Um, and then the other thing to think about with, I guess, all of this is, and, and people will be on here and they'll be, maybe there might be a, you might be the CEO, you might be the head coach, you might be, you know, working in another position. So I show this quite a lot, so I'll, I'll pause it in a second and just talk a little bit about it. So the reality is that everyone that we're supporting fits into a team somewhere. And this is the England team. Uh, running a session in 2016 um, <clears throat> and so the stuff I see is um, well that's not a coach and that's not a coach and that's Steve Borthwick so I see three coaches stood together in 7,000 square meters all looking at the ball um, no one could tell this player how am I doing no one could help support these players with not just looking at the ball and so the other thing for me with this is 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 being intentional around how you co-coach how you work together as a team and this was a relatively early stage for this group and they got significantly better mm. however I think it's critical that we're spending time understanding people's context and how they fit in so I work with some coaches at Birmingham City and as an example who they co-coach with will influence their coaching. What the academy manager thinks about certain things will influence their coaching. And same in business. If the business measures profit, then people will behave that way. So part of my role is really to try and understand people's context. And the stuff that probably excites me the most is, is the story that got them there. So what were the highs? What were the lows? What was the toughest thing you ever came through? How did you come through it? And just getting to understand them as people, really. Um, next slide. Have I got a next slide? Yes, let's go. Let's go. Sorry, Ryan, I'm working this out. I'm working this out. I've got it. Nice. Um, and then I, I actually just did this this morning for, um, for the business. And I was thinking about... So then the most important thing is your coaching conversations with them. So this is a session at Colston School where, where these three players, four players, are the coaches for the day. So I'm trying to help them be coaches. And so I'm coaching them and they're coaching their peers, which is a, which is a big leap. Um, and so what I tried to do today with the business was talk about, so if I'm a someone who's helping other people get better, what might a coaching conversation look like? So why would it happen? How would it happen? What would we do beforehand? What would we do during? As a what would we do after, but it's hidden? How would feedback fit within our world? And what questions would be useful? And I'll just talk about a couple of them that I think would be useful. Uh, Way What is from Danny Kerry. Where am I? Where are they? So one of the 
uh, people in the business I'm speaking to today. She had a pretty tough conversation to do. She said she jumped onto Zoom and the other person was really happy. And so she completely changed the conversation based upon where am I, where are they? She talked about, wow, awesome. This, I'm, I'm loving your energy today. How do you get to be like this? What, what do you like on a good day? Okay, interesting. What's a bad day look like? What, so she adjusted how she did it because she basically looked at where are they. Um, the other one for me that I think is important beforehand is how often are we as coaches or leaders really mindful of our state beforehand? So we're often really busy and then we jump into a meeting and we jump into a, and actually have we prepared for it? Have we given ourselves a really high performance moment? Um, as opposed to just continuing on at this level. Uh, one more I'm going to talk about um, is this one, take your shoes off. So lots of stuff about walk in another person's shoes. I think we've got to take our shoes off first. We've got to understand what assumptions are we making? What's their context? What's happening in their world? COVID is a tough time for lots of people there isolated on their own they're not seeing loved ones so i think this has become really important at the moment mm -hmm. and then i would just have a good bank of questions my favorite question probably is what one thing could you tell me that would help me coach you better so what one thing could you tell me about you that would help me coach you better so i would have some some useful questions i'm a, i'll share all the slides afterwards i won't be translating them into spanish though juan will do that um the last thing I always think about as well is like, it might not be me. So this is Johnny Wilkinson. He famously kicked a ball in 2003 and he, and he did pretty well out of it in a World Cup final. And these are some of the young players that we're trying to develop into the, the future leaders. And I'm 45. I'm from Middlesbrough. I've never kicked a ball in a World Cup final. I might not be the best person for this situation. So working out who's the best person to support these people on this journey is really important for me. Um, all of our coaches and leaders would have their own development plans. They would own them. They would all look different. However, they are just a piece of paper until they're brought to life. So who are the people that sit behind this? How do we know it's been successful? What does the, what's the first step? What's the possible things that'll get in the way? So for me, this is really important. I, um, I can't, the analogy I use is like, um, what's, in, what's in your carry-on luggage? So if you're getting in the plane, what's the two or three things you're taking on the carry-on luggage that are really important at the moment? And, um, I'm aware of, like Eddie Jones speaks about doing three month development plans. I think that's a, a reasonable way to do it. Um, I also think you should maybe have development plans for different contexts. So if I'm a sports coach, I might have one for training and one for the matches because they're two different contexts. And some of the stuff that goes on in matches is very different to training so it might be in business i actually have a development plan that's purely around my really important conversations or my big meetings or whatever it might be um last slide and i've done quite well here well i've done quite well here Juan. um i would want to make it sticky so i would want to make any kind of leadership or coach development sticky and there's some ways to do that so um as an example, on the 24th of December, I ran almost 22 kilometers. Um, as Juan knows, that has never happened in my life. Um, and the reason I did it is because I wanted to beat my wife. It wasn't because I'm Santa, it wasn't because I wanted to lose weight. So, and because I'm really competitive. So other ways we've done it, we've, as coaches, so this is Fletch, me, Kaz, analyst, Hilly, coach, Grant, s &C, Waltz, coach, um, and all the different functions within the team, we would write up on the board the stuff we're trying to get better at. The players would then keep score 
and give us feedback on stuff. So same in business. If you're wanting to get better at something, share it with your peers, ask them for feedback. They will give you honest feedback. They, um, they definitely know more than you know. So when I speak to, uh, and I know Sam's on here, so when I speak to some of the GB hockey players, um, they know the routine around huddles. They know which coach speaks first. They know whether the questions are divergent or convergent. They have all the answers. So another one I would use is an, an elastic band. So if you could imagine having something physical to remind you of stuff, because we're talking about behavioral change here. Um, so an elastic band would remind me to stretch people. So I'm pretty good at catching people doing stuff well. So that must have taken real courage to do that. What I need to get better at is um, then using that to stretch people. So lots of ways I've done it. Uh, I'll, I'll talk briefly about the cards I've got to. We do business cards. They're a good way of stretching and nudging and making this play fuller. I think Juan's probably translated them into Spanish. Uh, there he is. There he is. Um, <laughs> If you want to get them, just get in touch with me or Juan. And then last thing for me, um, I'm not very good at singing. And so if Juan suddenly asked me to join him singing, I don't know, what, what would we sing, Juan? What would be a good Spanish song for us to sing? Oh, in Spanish? Uh, yeah. Oh, you got me there. I was going to go, I will survive, but in English. Cool. So if, if, if suddenly you told me I was going to sing I Will Survive, I would feel very, very scared. Um, what I would say is that um, I think people need to feel nervously excited more often than not. And what I see is lots of people going through the motions. So even if you decided to um, just add on 2% every day and go, I'm going to try something 2% new stuff, a little experiment and see what happens, then you'll get better. I think we need to have those feelings more often than we currently do. It definitely helps me as a coach. So uh, I think I was well beyond this about half an hour ago, Juan, if I'm brutally honest. But that kind of, you've got to get your stuff together. So I think our job as supporting people who are about to go and sing karaoke is we need to understand what song they're able to sing. So it might be that I start out with, I will survive, and maybe I can work on to Ness and Dorma or something like that. Um, <laughs> what feels like a, you've got to have conversations with people around, are you cool with this? Is this something that you're comfortable with? How can I support you? There's no way we're just throwing people in to sing Ness and Dorma and, uh, and dying because they may never recover from that. One. I did it. I did it on time. Absolute legend. I am well impressed. About Shall I stop sharing? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Um, thank you for that, May. I mean, I know you for years now, and I'm still, I'm still taking a bunch of notes down here. I'm sure loads of people around the board, the world who are on this call will be, will be doing the same thing. But yeah, thanks again for that. Really. Really fantastic insight. Um, loads of questions starting to arrive. Uh, I'm going to try my best to translate some of them into English. Um, and then if you want to jump on and ask uh, Rusty a question, then um, put your hand up with a little tool that is directly underneath the participants window. Um, I've got a question here, uh, Rusty, which I think is quite interesting from Tito in La Plata in Buenos Aires in Argentina. He's, he's asking about the, that really thin edge between empathy and losing your leadership qualities. So, so when do you start losing those qualities or the, those uh, characteristics, let's call them? Um, can you go overboard with empathy? I'm trying to make justice to the question, Tito, sorry. Yeah, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Um, it's, a, it's a great question, by the way. It's definitely got me thinking. Um, <laughs> something that I've noticed um, 
recently because of covid is lots of people that i'm working with are being more empathetic mm -hmm. and they're actually demonstrating vulnerability which okay. i think is really important so um one of the guys i work with said someone rang him and said they were really struggling and he would normally go well you know get on with it um and um he said i've really been struggling as well and he said it opened up a remarkable conversation so can you have too much empathy i think it depends upon your environment sometimes you know in lots of our sporting environments there's a there's a culture where knowledge is king and you might have to demonstrate some of that um i think it's contextual i actually think like vulnerability and empathy are super strengths um i get quite um I just wouldn't want to work in an environment where they weren't, quite frankly, uh, really valued. So yeah, I think you, you get alongside people, you understand what's important to them. I think if you've got an agreed purpose for your environment, it becomes very easy. And if you agree behaviors beforehand, so we're currently doing that with one of the businesses is what behaviors are going to be helpful for this team? And one of the ones they've come up with is, is, is inclusive. And then we talk about what that means to this team. And so it's pretty, it's pretty simple that we value that behavior around here. So I guess my challenge to everyone is, do you have that agreed purpose, established behaviors, so that when someone demonstrates it, it's seen for what it is, that it's, it's important, it's powerful versus people you know might in rugby they might say it's pink and fluffy thanks for that mate um i've got another one here from eddie um eddie wants to know uh, what are your thoughts around uh, let's call it a competition within a team with sub teams will you have a, a leader on each of those um smaller teams um uh, how would you go about it if they were mm children where where would you try to take them yeah look i think everyone can lead i think we we would have a, a debate around what we think leadership is mm -hmm. um so one of the best leaders i know is a guy called richard hill uh played for england rugby in the world cup played for the lions he's the best listener i've ever met He's like really good at following, but he'll also challenge at the right time. So some people think that leadership in rugby is like telling other people what to do. Now it might be that tactically helping people is useful, but it might also be that leadership is helping uh, people who are finding it hard. Mm -hmm. Or it might be that you're the, the problem solver who then tells the leader. So, We've done a fair bit of work on, especially with the younger ones, on almost having like, you're the doctor, you're the carer, you're the warrior, you're the, and they almost like these, so they can see there's different forms of leadership and then celebrating those. So getting peers to nominate who was the best carer today. Um, I'm, I don't know what it's like in other people's countries, but in England at the moment, like the NHS and the carers, they're like the true leaders. And I hope we don't go back to Boris Johnson being the leader to what people think leadership is. So, yeah, and I would support them. I think it's really individual, Juan. Um, I think it's um, leading yourself is a really good start. So understanding yourself and what you're good at and what you're less good at and trying to get better at. Um, for me, that might be that they captain a team. It might be actually, so I'll give you a good example. So Marcus Smith and Tom Curry, who would be regarded as leaders, um, their leadership challenges are different. So Marcus, which three players do you think you could help today on a secret mission? Mm -hmm. And would you need my help with it? Are you cool with it? Who do you think is going to struggle today, Tom? How can you help them? Um, and I'm not broadcasting that to everyone. Yeah. I'm definitely not saying, look, Tom's going to help you if you're not very good, because that's not the best thing to do. Um, 
So I think it's really different. One thing I see a lot of is kind of people having leadership teams. Um, what I notice about that is, um, I don't know whether it'll translate, social loafing. So people outside the team saying, well, I'm not a leader. So what I would say is with the leadership teams is make them dynamic. So give people opportunities. So Juan, who do you think could join our leadership team this week? Mm -hmm. Who do you think should drop out for a week and just make them dynamic? Um, I think leadership's just so individual. Cool. Um, May I've got Alejandro here. I've got a feeling you might have had play against each other when you were at Bath. Prop. Tigers. There you scary go. Scary prop. He's a scary prop one. <laughs> Ale, we're, we're listening, mate. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm good, thank Thanks you. All. all right. Okay. My question is, you know, the kids uh, at these, these times we live in, is really struggling to communicate or emotionally when you ask something, it takes a long time to, to get involved and, and that development of leadership. How you or you have uh, any tips to carry that, that environment of leadership and having fun at the same time or more quickly, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so something I think is really important is belonging. So you will have all been in either sporting or business teams where you felt part of that team and you felt really valued and like people in the team cared for you. You will have also been in teams where that wasn't the case. Just think about your behaviours in both those different teams. So I think part of it is the environment. So I think what I'm trying to say is I would want to understand why. So it might be that <clears throat> they don't feel valued in the environment. It might be that there's three other kids that are doing everyone else's talking and they don't listen. So, and often as coaches, we will go, oh, those three kids are really good leaders. I'm like, they're telling us all the wrong stuff and everyone's following them. And the really quiet kid he or she, they know all the right answers. They're just too scared. So I would maybe ask these people to maybe not speak today and you can just ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, I might use peer-to-peer -peer feedback. So tell me, tell me what little Alejandro's done well today. Actually, once you start to feel value from your peers. Now, the other thing I might need to do is scaffold that conversation. So I hope this translates. Um, so I was at a hockey um, session um, and the coach said, and it was 15-year-old boys, um, go and find someone else and tell them something they've done really well. So I walk over to two 15-year-old boys who are facing each other in silence and I said, oh, okay, do you guys do this very often? And they said, um, I think we're only doing it because you're here. <laughs> Which is good awareness from them. Um, so it would have been really easy for me and you to go, well, look, Alejandro, you know, Rusty, have a conversation. Look, it would look like this. So Alejandro, I, I love the way you, you did that scrum. Your legs were in a brilliant position. I wonder if you could, you know, you could push them another meter back. So we could model that conversation. What I think we don't do well enough as coaches and leaders, so that was that slide today. These people are all leaders in a business. They've done, they basically had to work out how to do coaching conversations themselves. I think the kids often have to work out how to do it themselves. We just did a webinar earlier with... Um, some of the guys who played in the Olympic final for Great Britain, so the sevens, and, um, and Marcus and, and Tom, and I asked them, so they were half time in the Olympic final, and they looked shocked, and they didn't know what to do. And I said, how many times have you practiced that? Because the other thing, and by the way, the answer was zero. 
Um, Because the other thing we need to do is practice it. So if we're going to have these conversations, we need to practice help. And everyone here who's a leader will remember the first meeting they ever had to host and how they felt. (laughs) And and wouldn't it be great if someone had helped us a little bit more? Um, And I often think that with the kids on the pitch. We could help them with huddles, with half times, with peer-to-peer feedback. I think we could help them do it. They won't just naturally do it. And you, you, you guys would know much more than me about, I'm sure about stuff like the teenage brain. But the teenage brain is like, especially at this age, it's critical. They, they're bothered about their peers. They don't care about me. So if peers are re- give them really good feedback, then that's really powerful. And by the way, if they don't, if they start being mean to each other, then you just can't walk past it. You can't let that happen, in my opinion. So go back to what I was saying about the business. Once you've agreed, like, purpose, behaviours, let's really celebrate the behaviours, but also let's be really aware of, of, of the stuff we do not value around here. Because the minute you allow it, it's done in my opinion. Thanks, Rusty. It's always good to, to listen to a prop talking about feelings. <laughs> um, and Rusty, I'm going to turn you into Marty McFly. We're going to fly into the future. Seven hours for us, about 13 hours for some of the people that are on this call. Gary in Singapore, mm. how are you, mate? Oh, good, one. How are you? Good, very good, very good. Good to see you, Rusty. Hey, Gary, you well? Yeah, not bad, not bad. We're missing you over here. We can't wait to get you guys back over. Nice. It was too hot for me last. It was too hot for Juan. So Juan <laughs> and his and his eye was hurting a lot. <laughs> All good fun. Um, that was a good tournament. No, I was going to say um, the video you or the picture you posted up on one of the slides on the England training session, and you had all the coaches kind of huddled together. You had players in isolation. Nobody was coaching them. That looks like most Saturday mornings um, on the minis fields. You know, we, you may recall, um, coach a squad of under tens. But um, having gone through from under fives all the way up to tens, that's normally what it looks like. How would you suggest, you know, uh, encouraging part-time coach? You know, the parent coaches that are getting involved, which is great. How do you encourage them to kind of get more involved and, you know, have those discussions with players and not really treat it as an opportunity to have a weekly catch up with their buddies? Yeah, um, I'm going to give you a provocative uh, answer first and then I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, A provocative answer, ask the kids. Um, Question, um, how much time in a year, how many hours in a year do you spend talking about how you're going to coach together? Most Thursdays. Well, no, we probably end up playing poker. (laughs) Yeah. So at the moment, you might have to... There's an opportunity cost associated with playing poker. Um, I I would say... I would... Go on. I know I I do know what you mean. No, we do... We would get together um, probably on occasions when people like yourselves are passing through. And, you know, we get together on those occasions, but generally we turn up on a Saturday morning and it's kind of, you know, let's go, let's just get on with it. And the benefits to that for the kids, because you want them to get straight into it. Um, You know, we've been listening to a lot of what you guys have been saying around, you know, letting them play a lot more freely, less drills, that kind of thing. Um, But yeah, just getting the coaches to, move from having it as a weekly catch-up and uh, getting a bit more invested in it. It's difficult balance. Yeah, look, some, some stuff I'm thinking about. I would always say you don't have time not to have those conversations. So it'll be really important for the kids. Um, the other potential limiting factor is like your ability to coach within a game. So actually, you then might want to go, well, we need to revisit those skills. I yeah. would, and, and I don't, It was interesting when I said about Ask the Kids. So two things have happened recently for me. One is at Birmingham City, 
I had, so I would normally do, as you would know, like have some co coaching cards. So if I'm mm. coaching, I know that the three or four kids that are finding it the hardest will probably get missed by Rusty. So I might go, look, it would be awesome, Gary. Could you help the kids that are finding it hard? I would also know that actually, Juan, I quite like being in the middle. So could you coach off the ball? And that yeah. would be awesome. So I'm quite aware of what I'm not very good at. And so I would do that. Actually, what's happened recently, two things. One is at Birmingham, I had the cards ready and I thought, why have I never asked the kids? Ever. So I said, look, we've got four coaches. How do you want to use them, kids? And the kids said, don't stop the game. Individual interactions. Start with something positive. And the goalkeeper said, and outfield coaches, it would be great if you came and spoke to me. So they're really aware of their needs and what they want. And actually, that was helpful. The other thing that happened was I was in Boston in January. And I, and I had the cards again. And I said, coaches, who wants to co-coach with me? And the kids went, no, 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 we'll do it, Rusty. I was like, what? You're like nine-year-old kids. Seriously, at your age. Um, but, but I said, well, look, secret mission. So I said, cool, as long as you don't tell anyone what your card is. So there's one kid, nine-year-old, and he had the card that was head of happiness. And head of happiness had to catch other kids doing stuff well, give them a fist bump or a high five, and just... And then if he wanted to, he could then go, I bet you can't do it again. So he could stretch them. And fair play, this little kid was nine years old. He, he'll definitely be a good footballer because he had the hair. And he was quite confident. And he was probably the best player. And so we did a session for 20 minutes. And at the end, I said, oh, tell me about, tell me about your best coaching interaction. And I was not mentioned once. They were talking about their kids and their peers. And so the other thing we could do is think about how we could get the kids to interact more with each other. So my other challenge to you, Gary, it's a question, but I think I know the answer. And by the way, the answer is normally quite close to zero. How much planning goes into the peer-to-peer -peer interactions in your sessions? No, we do, we do have some. We do have oh, some nice. on, a, on a Thursday. It's usually um, what, you know, the coaches will send out drills on WhatsApp or not drills, but, you know, will allocate responsibilities yeah. on a Thursday. And usually, you know, you've met Tim. Um, Tim's quite good about it in that he'll give us free reign to come up with our own um, sessions. One of which um, I, I spoke to one about. And that was the one with the football and, you know, trying to encourage tackling lower. So, you know, we do have some discussions about it, um, but it's just kind of trying to get more of that interaction with the kids probably is where we need to go. Yeah, I mean, s someone said something the other week that hit me pretty hard. So Ed Hall said, how much planning do we do for action, i.e. the practices, versus how much planning do we do for interaction? So kid to kid adult to kid, adult to adult. My sense is that we're probably, sounds like you guys are starting to move this way. And, and, and when you speak to the players, they actually rarely go, oh, oh, that was an amazing drill. They kind of enjoy this stuff, especially at the age groups you're talking about, where feeling belonging is really important. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks, okay. Gas. Good to see you as, as usual. Um, thanks for that, Rusty. Rusty Juan, it's the first time you've seen Gary. You spent the whole time in a hotel last time. No, that was a, that was a, that was the first time. Not the second time. Not the second time. <laughs> Mate, uh, I'm taking you back to Argentina. Nacho, Nacho is in a in a position where he's trying to develop other coaches within his organization, within his club, um, and he's he's inquiring about this again this fine edge between judging somebody or trying to give them a hand or them feeling judged about how he's passing information he obviously has access to a lot more information that some of his coaches do because of his role in the club um, now any any advice around around that area there'll be lots of people in this call 
that would be in similar in similar scenarios? It's a great question, Nacho, and I and I thought of a really good answer yesterday. Um, why don't you ask every coach to be a coach developer with you for a week? So they come and be coach developer. So I only after I did the Premier League football head of coaching thing that I thought I should have suggested that. So they become aware of the stuff you're looking at. So it doesn't become this, because the other thing, um, so what I've noticed in England a lot is, it's either me watching you or you watching me. So it might be that you co-coach and go, look, how can I help you today? And you're then not like the man with the clipboards writing stuff down. Um, some stuff I also wrote about is uh, we need to understand like what bus stop they're at. So there was a time, Nacho, where you weren't as good a coach as you are now. And there was a time probably about two weeks ago where I was worse than I was. If I look back on some of my coaching from a year ago, I would struggle to share it. And I've seen uh, Miki's here from Israel, so uh, she, could, she might vouch for that. Um, but um, you need to understand where people are. And I, and I think you're right in, and I would try and not judge. So are you, are you curious as to some feedback? So let them open the door. Do you, do you want to know what I think? Um, put no judgment on it. What I noticed was there was lots of huddles. Is that what you, is that what your intention was? Or what were you hoping to do through that? So I wouldn't put judgment on it. I would always try and grow their awareness and think, well, Where's the next bus stop? Um, I had this uh, conversation with a guy in a business again, and, I said, and he's working with one of the people. Uh, he's helping coach someone below him. Uh, I'd say below because that's the language they use. Um, and I said, if you had a day a week purely devoted to this one person, how long do you think it would take for them to be brilliant at coaching conversations and he said it would take a year so why are you getting frustrated about it because that's the reality so there's definitely some stuff as a club you can do you can you can get everyone together and you can agree some principles around coaching so it might be that we have an individual interaction with every kid we coach mainly through games so you can agree some stuff but then your job is to kind of just help them move on. The other thing, and, and this, this kind of sounds hard, it's so much more powerful when they realise it for themselves. So you will have all had people that told you stuff and you need to do this and you need to do that, and you just went, he's a dick. <laughs> However, like when people help you realise it for yourself, it's so powerful. I might co-coach with them. I would give them choice, but I would limit the choice. So you might go, um, look, I've been, you know, there's a couple of practices here. Which one do you want to do? I've, you know, they might come and co-coach with you. You might go, look, I've designed, I've got two games. Which one do you want to coach in? And then immediately they're coaching in a game. So I like co-coaching. The other thing I would do with more clubs is, just spend more time with different age groups. So the under 12s, they have to go and spend three sessions with other age groups before Christmas. Like that peer-to-peer -peer stuff. Because the other thing I'm often assuming is I'm the only one that can develop them. Well, actually, if they're doing stuff between themselves, last kind of thing. So whenever I go into a school, I'll usually go, look, if I'm zero, Juan's 10, stand on the line where you're currently sharing. And they'll be maybe at four or three. And then I'll go, cool. And, and if it's the PE department, I'll go, and with the other subjects? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's zero with the other subjects. We don't speak to biology. Well, <laughs> they do anatomy as well. So I would, I would try and harness the, the group Maybe you put on yoga before training for the dads and mums and they do an hour's yoga while they chat about coaching and I would just make it feel really informal. The problem with you doing it on the pitch, 
next to them is they do often feel judged. So I try and be really chilled. And I, and I was in a school recently and, and, I, and I tried to sneak behind somewhere and write a note because I really wanted to remember it. And at the end, I said, oh, how was it? He said, oh, I got really off put when you sneaked behind there and wrote that note. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. So I would try and make it playful. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. Um, not too far away from Nacho in the same city, actually. Uh, Mariano is really into his uh, theming this season. So giving it, giving it awesome. some context. Uh, he's done a really cool one around Game of Thrones, which uh, he found out from his players. They were all into it. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's promised me he's going to send it to you after this webinar as well. So Right, I'm all in. There's a challenge for him. Um, he wants to know if you if you got any experience around theming a season and developing coaches alongside. Yeah, and I've just put a, a guy in, in the chat box who's, who's done quite a nice piece on Twitter about this. It's in English. A guy called Dave Sharkey. Yeah, Sharkey. And he had a team of um, kids that were very good and he wanted to coach character. So they did a, a landing on the moon project, which is pretty cool. Wow. Um, look, I, I've done it a fair bit. Um, I think it sounds like you're doing it really well. Like find out what resonates with them. Um, keep it going. It's easy that things become fads and they disappear. Um, it's a really good way of remember. So if you were to all remember back to your youth, I'm sure you can remember some of the stories. So chicken licking, I can remember. Uh, you can remember the rhymes, the, the songs. I can remember the words to every single song from the 80s. However, I can't remember how to calculate the volume of a cylinder. Um, so there's some... There's science behind storytelling and theming. It, we remember stuff. And so yeah, I, think it's, I think it's cool. I, I, I agree with you. So we've tried to do it a bit with coaches and their coach development plans. We've also tried to gamify them as well. Um, yeah, I'm definitely excited to see what you're doing. It'll definitely be better than mine. Uh, what have we done? We did the Duke. Uh, we've done the A-team. What I loved about Scott Robertson, so the thing that I, th I think is really important with the theming is, so Scott Robertson, I just did a pod with him. He coaches at the Crusaders, and he would be the best in the world at this, in my opinion. And I said, where did it come from? And he said, well, 25 years ago, I was like, why am I? So the story so far, so if I take over a team, so I'm working with a business at the moment, like what's got us to this point? What's the highs? What's the lows? Yeah. What are the really big moments that got us to this point? Because then we can move, then we can talk about that. And actually we ended up with a theme from that. So we've got, we're doing the climb. So we're trying to climb to Everest. Apart from Everest doesn't have a peak in our world. And so we, we designed a flag for the top of Everest. We designed base layers. So everyone's got a, a t-shirt with their super strengths on, written by other people. I was really nervous because they're like, you know, they're, they're middle-aged people like me. And I was like, and we're going to design a t-shirt. And they were like, awesome. I'll just go and get the colors. I'm all in. Um, so it, it works with the grown-ups as well would be my advice. I think it's almost more important with the grown-ups. Cool. So definitely send me it. Yeah, yeah, he'll send it to you. I think you'll be, you'll be impressed. And we're going to jump the Andes for our last question. Um, I'm going to go to Santiago here, Juan. Um, good to see you, Juan. We're listening. Are we? Not quite. There we go. All right. Hello, Rusty. How are you here from Santiago de Chile? Hey, mate. I've been to Santiago. Yeah, okay. Um, my question is, you, you show how, how you show the players uh, the, the goals of the coaching team to improve, as you show in, the, in your presentation, yeah. and how you also organize the feedback from the, from the players 
to the coaches about this because it's not very easy to hear from the players what you, what they have to say to you. Yeah, well, <laughs> I can uh, look. I think there's some stuff that probably comes before that. So you've probably got some good relationships. You might want to actually have conversations. So for me, I think it would be useful to have conversations with players about how they give feedback. There's a really good uh, TED talk. It's about five minutes long, which I think is the best thing I've seen on tip feed feedback. I'll, I'll maybe find it and send it to you, Juan. Because, um, yeah. you know, you also don't, yeah. I mean, you've got to be comfortable probably as a coach. Um, you can, clearly the questions you ask, so you might ask them just to feedback on the best stuff. So you might go, look, what's the, the best two things Juan's doing? But you might go, look, what's the best two and, and what would make him even better? So those are, um, as opposed to going, right, what are the five worst things Juan does? Come on, let's talk about it. So, um, but I think the benefit of it is huge. So it's vulnerability. It's taking away hierarchy. It's helping us get better. Um, as a teacher for two years and at the end of my first term, I, I, I created a feedback sheet and I gave it to the kids and it was, it was so impactful for me. So, so impactful. And then I, I felt really good about it. So I emailed it to all the teachers and, and they told me I was crazy. <laughs> I, so my challenge to coaches is, where are you currently getting your feedback from? If it's not the kids, where is it? If you're bringing someone in and they're, I would almost rather get it from the kids than the grown-ups because the kids will, they'll be really honest. They'll go, ah, oh, Rusty, yeah, your jokes are terrible. Your huddles are too long and you just need to calm down. You're too excited. Um, so I guess for me, I'm, I, I see it as a huge advantage because we can, it possibly gives permission to go a bit more both ways. I would ideally have it in the moment. So um, I'll tell this story a lot. So I've been playing around with gamification and here's Rusty thinking he's, he's doing really well. And um, there's a kid last year at ACS Cobham, it's a school in England. And he said, oh, Rusty, can I give you some feedback? And he was 16. And he said, uh, that's the worst session I've ever done. I was like, oh, thank you. For that feedback um because it, it's never that easy is it but the feedback's pretty simple so so he said look and this is why my dad was in the military he's always told me what to do i've never had decisions and so that was too hard for me so it's it's been really impactful for me because two things one when i coach big groups i never remember I'm, never i often forget to, to use the players to be coaches as well. Secondly, I always miss the people that are struggling the most. They are the people that I find the hardest to spot, possibly because of where I'm standing or on my biases. And the third thing is, it really helped me because I now take a whiteboard to every session and I put the session on it and it gives people like that security. And so it gives them a safe place to go, look, Rusty, hang on, what's coming next? Or what about this? Why? It's really helpful. Uh, that came from a lady called Sally Needham, who works for the FA and she's a rock star. Um, so that conversation, albeit I'm definitely feeling your question, like at the time I was like, whoa. And if he'd done that to me 10 years ago, I'm not sure, to be honest. I don't think he would have given that feedback to me 10 years ago because I wouldn't have looked like someone who was necessarily open to it. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Juan. Um, he's desperately trying to get us out there, uh, Russell, so you'll be meeting him in, in person very soon. Mate, I'm conscious uh, about the time. Uh, we've just been a couple of minutes over the hour uh, and I'm conscious... Andrea is trying her absolute best uh, over there. Uh, mate, loads of people asking on the chat, how can they reach out to you? Yeah, just drop me an email. I'll put my email in here. I'm on Twitter. Don't 
don't go on Twitter uh, after four four o'clock in England because <laughs> they'll have just been the Prime Minister talking and I'll be very angry. So okay, they're gonna shut me down now. They're gonna shut <laughs> my channel down. <laughs> oh, so bad. So bad. Uh, the coming through then. Fantastic. <laughs> Rusty at themagicacademy.co.uk Brilliant, mate. Thank you so much uh, for your time as usual. Thank you so much to uh, all of you that, that you've been listening uh, and tuning in. Uh, mate, I'm going to leave you to, to wrap it all up. Um, final quick uh, announcement. Uh, if you want to join the uh, developing um, environments uh, around your, your athletes or your participants. Uh, it's, a new, it's a new instance of development that is starting this uh, Tuesday. It's in Spanish though, uh, so if you want to practice your Spanish skill, you can always jump on that. Uh, but mate, I'll leave it, I'll leave it to you to, to wrap it all up in your words of wisdom, uh, and then I'll open all the mics for everyone here to say thank you and gracias to you. Yeah, there's, there's probably two things I'm learning at the moment. And I'm working with a really big pharmaceutical business. So they are like really big. So it's very different to what I'm used to. Um, I just think people should be having more fun. They've only got one life. And the second thing is if, and that was a great last question about the feedback. If we could create environments where everything is about learning. So if someone... If we, if we sack someone, we both need to learn from that. If we appoint someone, we both need to learn. If we get feedback, we need to learn. That would be it for me, really. I just, and it's awesome that you guys have all jumped on to listen to me speak very poor Spanish. Because um, it, it appears that you're wanting to get better and learn. So hopefully something has been helpful. But yeah, thanks so much for having me, everyone. I see a few familiar faces as well, which is exciting. Brilliant. Rusty is listening to you all now. All the mics are open. Thanks, mate. Cheers, guys. Stay safe. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Yes, yes. 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 Yes.